we've looked at one of the ways of displaying this sort of vertical screen analysis graphically, that is histogram. Now we're going to look at another way, that is cumulative mass fraction. Okay. First of all, let's revisit mass fraction retain. What does this column say? This says that if you have a sample of particle and you do the sieve analysis, 2% of your sample falls through the 10 sieve and ends up on the 14 sieve. And since 10 sieve has an opening diameter of 0.065 and 14 has a opening diameter of 0.046, the average diameter of this sample, this 2% sample is 0.0555. So the 5% of your sample will have an average diameter of 0.0394 and so on and so forth. Now let's come to cumulative distribution curve. Cumulative distribution curve will have a new column, a fourth column. Okay. Here we are saying that 2% of my sample has an average particle diameter of 0.055. 5% has an average diameter of 0.0394. Now, if I rephrase the question and ask you, how much of your sample has a particle diameter that is higher than 0.0555? You will say 2%. How about how much of your sample has a particle diameter that is higher than 0.0394? Now you can't say 5 because you are asking how much of your sample is higher than 0.0394. You take this and this. So that's the cumulative mass fraction and that comes out to be 7. So 7% 7 plus 2 of my sample has a particle diameter higher than 0.0394. So this is and then we can complete the table. We can get 17% of my sample is higher than 0 0.028, 35% is higher than 0 0.0198 and so on and so forth. And finally, my lowest. Remember the lowest? This is minus 65 and pan. This one is the average particle diameter is 0 0.0041. And here we are saying that 100% of my particle is larger than this lowest diameter that I have, 0 0.0041, okay? Once you have this table, plotting is pretty standard and it's pretty easy. So, I'm just going to plot it, let's see. And I have the axis dp and I have label the axis and this is mass fraction. Technically, I should write Cumulative mass fraction smaller than larger than larger than x axis dp. Okay. So the first point is zero point zero five five five. So, 2% cumulative mass fraction is smaller than 0 0.0555. So, you can use 5.55 here. Okay. So, and then 7% is smaller than 0 0.0394. So, This is point 0.2 by the way, not point 0.0. And this one, this point is basically uh, okay. So I'm going to leave this to the left. It's pretty easy. So I'm just going to go ahead and plot it. Do it yourself and if you disagree with me, let me know. Okay. Same thing we can do. We can change our question and ask 
Now how about you plot the cumulative distribution curve of the mass fractions that are smaller than smaller than the dp given in the x-axis. So this time you can say that since 2% is greater than 2% of my sample is greater than 0 0.0555 that means 98% of my sample is smaller than 0 0.0555 okay just 100 minus 2 and similarly since 7% of my sample is larger than 0 0.0394 93% of my sample is smaller than 0 0.0394 and so on and so forth so 100 so this column is important and then you have 100 minus whatever is there in this column. So you have kind of a fifth column. Okay. And what about the last row? This one, 0% of my sample is smaller than 0 0.0041. Okay. So since 100% of my sample was larger than this lowest dp, 0% of my sample, and many a 0.0041 and niche ashura kono particle amar nine. Yeah, that's my smallest possible dp in this analysis that I have. Okay, now in class, I went ahead and talked about what is going to be the shape of these two curves. Okay, to so go ahead and plot it. Okay, the cumulative mass fraction of sample smaller than size noted you should get an s curve now it's sometimes confusing to understand which one is which so one way to remember is this s curve is smaller another way that i remember is that think about it zero percent like if you actually this is the point that is plotted if you extrapolate it you should actually there is a theoretical point, this is an absolutely theoretical point, 0, 0. Okay? This theoretical point signifies that 0% of my sample is smaller than particle diameter 0. Obviously, you can't have anything smaller than dp0. Right? So, that's why for this smaller curve, cumulative fraction of sample smaller than size noted, there is a theoretical point of 0, 0. Similarly, when you think of the larger curve that we already plotted a little bit ago, 100%, 100% of my particles are larger than dp0. 100% of my particles are larger than dp0. So, when you have the cumulative fraction of samples larger than size noted, you will definitely have a theoretical point of 100% 0 or if you go for mass fraction, 1 0. So, this is a quick way to remember the shape of these two curves. Also, we talked about in class that this cumulative mass fraction of material larger than a particular dp has a shortcut name and that is called oversize. And cumulative fraction of material smaller than a particular dp is called undersize. So, oversize curve is this one. Undersize curve is this one. Undersize meaning smaller, meaning s curve. However, you remember.